when I first started with Arbtech, I went up to the north to the HQ and I was able to go off on quite a few surveys with Louise, Ellen, Mel, like some of our ecologists who are based up there. And I think I've already mentioned, but I had amazing experiences off in Wales at this beautiful old church, seeing maternity colonies, driving through Snowdonia. Then we drove a few days later, we drove up all the way up to Sheffield, did a couple of surveys there, and then kind of inner city Manchester, uh, which is kind of quite a range for, of landscapes and environments. Uh, and I, I kind of already started getting stuck in with the classic bat survey experiences of kind of getting shouted at by security guards because people being like, why are you sitting on a road here? Um, kind of people who maybe had a few drinks coming up and inquiring what you do. And then the great joy, which is whenever a client has a dog and comes out and, and greets you, you can have an amazing a client who was right, quite rude uh, and, and frustrated at the bat survey process. And uh, but it was all redeemed because he had a very adorable Labrador that came over and uh, kind of had some pets while I was doing a two hour long bat survey. It was a good diversion. Um, and yeah, I, I, would, I was able to travel around the country quite a lot during the first couple of weeks here. I met a lot of the team members, so like Craig Williams, Natalie Evans, Faye, uh, and they've all been really friendly. They helped, you know, each of them had their own kind of tips and skills and their own way of doing things. So I've kind of assembled my own mishmash now of, uh, you know, different bits of kit that they recommended or different steps that you should do in the survey that isn't necessarily, you know, industry standard, but it's their own kind of methodology, the, way, the things they like to say to clients. Uh, and then, you know, I was able to trail them on these surveys and see how they might deal with clients who might be more difficult, tricky situations, and then to kind of foregather later at a pub or a cafe or something and go over it later and discuss the surveys and, and um, you know, sympathize with the challenges and the pitfalls that we've, we've been going through. Um, so I felt that was a really positive way to get to know the company and to start my career with Arbtech. So one of the, the great feelings when you're, when you're really up and running with surveys and on top of your admin is, is doubling up and kind of filling in multiple surveys in a day. Um, I'm very pleased to say I've just been able to start kind of doing that thing. So uh, I was just in uh, Guildford the other day and we just completed a site survey, which was, uh, it was well ahead of schedule. So I was really pleased that my, I could get my client in way ahead on my calendar because I had a cancellation. Um, and then I got a message from another uh, new starter, Beth, and she was saying, oh, I can't make this. I, you know, I can't do this survey because I just don't have enough time. Would you be able to cover it? I know it's really far away from where you live, but like, could you just fit it into your schedule somehow? She sent me the address and I realized it was like 10 minutes from where I was that second. So I was able to call the, the new client and say like, oh, actually, you know, I know you want to get the survey done quickly. I'm 10 minutes away. Should I just come over and do it? Uh, and it turned out to be a beautiful old kind of Victorian era house. Um, and I came up into the loft and there were thousands of bat droppings there and six uh, brown long-eared bats just clinging to the rafters looking down on me. And that was the first uh, actual bat roost that I'd found. So, you know, you often find droppings of bats, but you don't actually see the bats themselves. So these were the first kind of bats in the flesh that I'd seen in a building that I was surveying. Uh, and that was a really cool, um, really cool experience. And I got very excited about it. Uh, and then went to the client and said, oh, it's so exciting that we've got bats. And the client was like, oh, no, you know, that means that I've now got to do loads of extra surveys. That's just, this is not good news for me. Can you please try and be less excited and smug about it? Uh, which I, I, I just about maybe carried off. Uh, so I turned around and was like, I'm sorry, let's take that again. I, unfortunately, you've got bats and here's the steps you need to do. Um, so I think I think I think I got away with it. Um, and yeah, so you do double ups and that can often be a bit stressful. It means you have to then do all your reports quite quickly and have a, a non survey day. Um, but it seems to, to be a good way to get your billing high and to get a lot of work done. And if you can get it all together, it means that everything goes really efficiently and it cuts down on your driving, obviously, which I'm always pleased about. So once we've done a survey on site, so a preliminary roost assessment or a, you know, a bat emergence survey, we then have to do the admin of writing reports. And I actually have been helping out quite a lot with this because it's something I could do remotely and help someone write their desk study, process the photos. We normally aim to get these done within about five working days. Uh, and we often use a variety of software to get this done, like QGIS. Um, and I found that a bit challenging because I've been less familiar with the software. So I feel like my reports have been a bit slow, but I'm now picking up speed, getting a bit more familiar with it and getting my reports out. Um, I find it quite fun. It's often interesting. You kind of get to learn about the area. You can look up what national parks and protected areas are near there. And kind of you see quite a lot of the country as a kind of eagle's eye view via Google Maps. Um, and so I, you know, I find it enjoyable and it's nice to sit behind a desk for a little bit in between journeying off in your car and seeing sites. It's good to have a bit of a rest. So I feel it gives you a good balance writing the reports with actually doing the field surveys. So after I've produced a report uh, for a desk study or the, the PRAs or the emergent surveys we do for bats, 
Uh, we then have a QC, a quality control system. So I'll send it my report off and within a couple of days, one of the senior ecologists will have looked through it and they'll give me quite detailed feedback on whether my, you know, whether my recommendations are sensible, am I doing the right thing, you know, correcting things. Often I'll have made like a little stupid slip up as well that, that someone will point out and say like, are you sure that loft was three meters high, James? You know, like, doesn't seem likely. Um, and that actually I found is really helpful. Um, and I'm quite used to this actually from academia. You know, you're always passing a paper that you're working on to and fro. So it feels quite natural for me. I'm used to kind of rolling with the feedback. Um, and it's a really good system for actually making sure the client is getting a functional finished product because at least several, at least two ecologists will have looked at it before it goes out to them. And you, you know, it won't be like as a, you know, because I'm new and still learning this, you know, I often feel worried that a client might be let down by the fact that I don't know as much or I might make an easy mistake. So I have a bit of confidence that actually someone very senior, someone experienced is looking through our through my reports and making corrections if needed and sending it on. And luckily I haven't done anything too terribly wrong so far. And anything I have done has been caught, we hope. So I think it's been a good good system. So my main focus on Arbtech so far has been bat work. I'm really keen to get my license there. So I've been really trying to hammer out the bat hours and I'm quite pleased that I've got so many in, in such a short space of time. And a lot of that I've achieved just by kind of volunteering for as much work as possible on Slack and whenever kind of clients come up. But I'm also keen to get involved in, in other species and to build up my credentials there. So get a dormouse license, get a, uh, a great crested newt license, do work like that. And some of the other ecologists at Arbtech have been really good at helping me get skilled up, volunteering their time and bringing me on the surveys and, and talking me through the theories. Uh, what's been really amazing was like going out with Christopher Malgia, one of our senior ecologists and doing dormouse tunnel surveys. Uh, and this is like a brand new technique the, the People's Trust for Endangered Species is introduced that's much less invasive than other previous methods of surveying for dormice. So you can do it without having to be on a license. Uh, and that's a really cool technique. And it's great to kind of get in at the uh, the forefront of research like that and be able to take it kind of from uh, a, a, an academic basis and then bring it forward, reading the academic papers, and then bring it forward to a technique that the ecologists are using in the field. So it was really great to get involved in that and just kind of off the cuff, just saying, Chris, I know you, I saw in your calendar that you're doing this work it's really interesting to me academically so can I come along and uh, you know came along helped out with the work and now some other ecologists of ours elsewhere in the country are in interested in using the technique so I'm now going to go along with Natalie and um, show her how to use the technique and what's great about that is that I've now got that experience and know how to use the technique so I can now turn around to other of our ecologists in the country who are interested in using that technique and help them get it up and running so next week I'm going along with Nicole and we're setting up our own Dormouse surveys there and I'll be able to kind of cycle that knowledge forward. And, you know, in exchange, she's been amazing. She's going to show me um, great crested newt surveying, like bottle trapping and techniques like that. Um, and again, it's just really off the cuff stuff where I can just look at the calendars of the other ecologists on the company calendar and see that they're doing these techniques and see that it's going to line up. I might be in the area for a survey or I might want to kind of go up and spend the weekend in London just for my own kind of, uh, private life and then you know I'll just be able to say to some of the London ecologists oh, I'll be here on Friday why don't we go do us do the survey I'll join in I'll shadow you get to learn what you're doing here and then maybe we can go for like a social beer or something afterwards and that's a really nice kind of it has a nice kind of feeling of being efficient with my time and really kind of killing it with the surveys which is great so as, as a kind of trainee ecologist here I've, I've been doing a lot of professional development and really been smashing through training as I've been on the job and doing a lot of courses uh, I've been spending a lot of my weekends doing those, so I'll do that kind of full week and then I'll rush off to somewhere in Exeter or, or Somerset and do a kind of a course. Um, that's been very intense, but it's been like, it's been really positive to learn so much. Um, I'm still waiting for some of it to settle, but I certainly feel a lot more confident than I did a few months ago. And hopefully, you know, if this rate continues, I'll be in a great position at the end of the year. Arbtech seems to have this great attitude of kind of nurturing new talent and bringing on new ecologists and training them up rapidly. So they have this amazing... Uh, unlimited continued professional development idea that you can take any days you want and expense the training courses you're going to. Uh, and I've probably taken way more than my fair share of those, but there's been absolute positivity from the senior staff for that. Um, and they've been very forgiving that therefore that may mean that I'm not doing so many surveys on those days because I'm off in kind of Somerset doing a course on how to do a phase one habitat survey. Uh, but then in turn, that means that I'll kind of cycle through the skills and then I'll be able to do different surveys, different licenses and more a more varied kind of schedule of work so i think it's kind of a win-win for the company and for myself um so obviously i'm definitely benefiting on that really well 
and I'm looking forward to keeping doing that with the company and going on to more courses. I think the next thing I want to do is uh, some infrared surveying. Uh, so there's a course up in Oxford that I think we're going to sign up to. Uh, so the guidelines, I think the back guidelines are going to be changed next year to doing, uh, they need to have an infrared camera covering all the angles of the houses you're assessing. And then you need to go through afterwards and review that footage. And you might pick up bats that you would otherwise miss if you're just using eye, uh, you know, eyesight and a bat detector. Um, so from next year, I believe that's actually going to be moved into the legislation and that's going to be a requirement for surveys. Uh, so our aim as a company is to get on top of that, send everyone off to a training course, get in the cameras, get everyone trained up. And I believe several of my colleagues have already done that. So I'll be able to liaise with them and tap into their experience as well once I've done the training. So there's a couple of things I wasn't expecting to suck about being an ecologist or, or wasn't quite hadn't realized the scale of, of what I'd be faced with. So there's like I turned up at a house and I realized that they actually already done the building work. A vast amount of roofing work had been done and actually several bat colonies had probably been destroyed. But I quickly realized that I was out of my depth and, and I didn't have the experience level I needed. 